are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. <coughs> For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We do not lose heart. The Lord is my shepherd. It is good to be here today. It is good to be here because we know, almost every one of us ought to, we ought to know that we have been richly and wonderfully blessed in this life already. Maybe especially richly blessed in our wonderful and sweet encounters with Nancy. Lively encounters with Nancy. She would keep us going. It is good to be here, even on a somewhat sad day. But maybe enough of this. For I don't think Nancy was altogether in to sad days. Okay? She knew that life would sometimes try to hand you what life wanted to try and hand you. But that didn't mean that a person had to stay sad at it, at least for very long. And so generally, she didn't. She might be a little perturbed, but she wasn't going to be sad for long. For there were things to do in her life, and she was on the go. As long as she could, she was on the go. There were stores to visit, maybe things to buy, restaurants to patronize, trips to take, lakes and camps and beaches to visit, Daylight hours in which to soak up some of that energizing sun so she was ready to go for the next thing. Uh, both, both children, Tim and, uh, Tim and Fran both told me that Mama wasn't much for actually going in the water, but she liked to be around the lake and go camping and all that, and she'd get out and soak up the sun. And one of the last times I saw her back in midsummer at, at Brookview Lodge, it was maybe late summer, August or something, it was a dreadfully hot and humid day. And when I would go visit in Brookview, I usually went in the middle of the afternoon. It just seemed to be a time to work for Nancy and another lady I was visiting with. <coughs> it was like 3.15 or so in the afternoon, 3.30, and dreadfully hot. And I get out of my car, and I'm walking down to Brookview to the entrance, and there's a little porch on the side of it there, and there are often a whole group of folks there, you know, gathered together visiting. But on this hot day, they're all gone except for our buddy Nancy, okay? She's sitting out on the porch, not quite in the sun, but she's on the porch. She's sitting in her rocking chair. Uh, she's got her feet up in another chair she pulled over in front of her, like she's in the recliner at the beach or the, or the camp or the lake. She would, she would she liked to be outside in that sun. She might have been happy to be sad, but there just wasn't much time for that sort of thing. Or in Nancy's life, there were Christmas celebrations to plan. You know, I turned on the light here early this morning. She would like to have the lights on. There were Christmas ornaments to prepare, and I understand every year she did ornaments with the family, and maybe you guys have passed them on and around now. Praise God for that. There were plenty of folk to welcome and entertain, and Nancy liked that too, and so she did. And then maybe Nancy would have been more into sadness if it hadn't been such a damper on a good conversation or story or talk. And Nancy usually wasn't going to participate in letting something like that happen. Or in Nancy's life, there were friends, many friends like you, to talk to. And there were thoughts and stories and ideas and opinions to share. And so she often did, praise God. And then there were more stories to tell and more friends to talk to, and to ask about, and more things to figure out. 
You know, Nancy would also would like to listen too. When you would talk with her, you know, I used to say she would hold up her end of the conversation, but she'd let, she would ask you, she'd want to know things about you too. And she would ask about people. Praise God for that. She was eager to talk to her friends and hear about her friends. She was devoted to them. Devoted like she was devoted to her family. Devoted in some ways like the Lord, that good shepherd, is devoted to us. And maybe that is also a good way to think about Nancy. As someone who lived and was, was a blessing to others and had been richly blessed by so many folk. And as she was devoted to them, in many cases devoted to you. In the ancient world, a shepherd had to be pretty devoted to those sheep to be a good shepherd. And so maybe Nancy was a pretty good shepherd because she was pretty devoted to her treasured and cherished friends and family, her long adopted uh, friends and family, the people who had been with her for a long time, the people in her town, the people in her church. Nancy was devoted to her people and she was devoted to helping them. She was devoted to her building. And he likely knew it. Tim told me a story on the telephone the other day about <coughs> Daddy's lunchbox. On the inside of it, there's a like a cartoon strip. Okay. Now I'm old enough to remember there used to be a cartoon strip called Nancy. Now I don't know if that's what it was, okay? But there was a cartoon strip called Nancy. You know, this cartoon strip taped into Daddy's lunchbox. There's a picture in there, and whoever's talking says, "Milk, cookies." And Nancy, could anything be better? <laughs> she was, Nancy was devoted to her building, and he likely knew it. And Nancy was devoted to her children, as any shepherd is devoted to the, to the beings under its care. As any mama would be devoted. She took care of them, left her job and stayed at home to be there for them, helped instruct them, and she was not above offering a little more instruction if they didn't get the idea the first time or the second time. And as a mama, she took them to dance class and other groups and meetings and activities. And then she was a devoted grandmother. She was devoted to her grandchildren, regularly telling me how this child or that was now doing this or doing that. Praise God for us. She was their nanny. She was devoted. She was devoted to her extended family helping them keep family dates and birthdays on center stage. In many ways, she sort of turned into the family historian is the way I heard it. And she had a good memory, so she was ideal for that kind of work. And in my own description, Nancy was the undefeated queen of sending encouraging and celebrating cards. Cards to everyone. Church, neighbor, family, extended family, old friends, new friends, praise God for it all. She was devoted to sending those cards much as our Heavenly Shepherd is devoted to our care and our protection. Nancy worked for Jones and Company Insurance here at Crew, and she spoke highly of it. She enjoyed those years. And Jimmy back there told me one of the best things he ever did when he hired her, that she was good and she was honest. He tells a story about how when the big downtown explosion came, that she was right there with him trying to find the records and and the, the things that they would need to put everything in place to help not only their business, but the other businesses get back on their feet pretty quickly. And Nancy was devoted to her church and the welcome and the service of that church. She was active in her circle in the PW, the Presbyterian women here for years and years, helping to organize sometimes and host and get things ready for their monthly men's suppers. And one of her church friends told me, that one of the things that she most admired about Nancy was a willingness to almost always take and make the best of things. And maybe that takes us back pretty close to where we started when we were talking about not being sad. It just wasn't Nancy's way too much. Or maybe, and maybe another way to look at that thought is to see it as the great apostle Paul saw it. That as the people of the Lord, as the people of love, we are people who do not lose heart. Nancy Redmond was not one to lose heart. She might be down for a while, but she would soon be working her way back up, going back as it, at it as she could, much as her Lord and Savior knew what it was like to work his way back up. 
And as we enter and go and get ready to close this part of our service, the meditation time, I have a letter that speaks to this idea of not losing heart, not losing heart in the Lord, of Nancy not losing heart in this world, in this life. Reverend Lisa Myers, the pastor today of the Ward's Chapel in Bethel, United Methodist Churches here in this part of the world, uh, met Nancy years and years and years ago. Actually married, marrying into the family of a treasured friend of Nancy, and Reverend Lisa Myers sends these words as she thinks of Nancy and the testimony of the apostle about not losing heart. I first met Nancy over 33 years ago at Friar Memorial. Billy and Nancy were good friends of my soon-to-be mother and father-in-law, Mary and Gary Myers. I often attended Friar Memorial with my fiance, Steve. As a young girl from Buckingham County, new to crew and new to the Myers family, Nancy made me feel accepted and at home. She also made me laugh a lot. Three years ago when I came back to Burkeville, came to Burkeville as pastor to Ward's Chapel and Bethel Churches, she made me feel welcome again. She sent word through my mother and father-in-law that she would love a visit. I remember her words each time I visited her. Lisa, come in, sit down, tell me all the news, and don't leave out any details. <laughs> it just sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> her energy, enthusiasm, and love of life was contagious. I loved chatting with her and always felt left with a spring in my step and my burdens a little lighter. And that is what Nancy did. She made folks feel good. Nancy truly loved God and her neighbors. That goodness, zest, and enjoyment of life always shone through, no matter what difficulties she was experiencing. Her positive attitude and ability to adjust to difficult challenges amazed me. Fran and Tim, you were blessed to have an amazing mother in Nancy. I was blessed to have her for a friend. I will continue to pray for your family because she will truly be missed. Some folks quietly walk into a room, but Nancy filled the room. Please take comfort today in Jesus' promises that he is preparing a place for those who love him, and Nancy loved him. Nancy did not lose heart. She adjusted. With God's help to all the struggles and joys of the life and is now experiencing a joy beyond all measure, May God comfort your family and continue to strengthen you. May God enable you to stand strong in your faith as your mother did. Friends, Scripture tells us that we can stand strong because God in Christ Jesus stands strong. And Nancy knew some about what it was like to try and stand in some of that heaven-sent strength. And Scripture tells us that we can be a shepherding presence because we have known the shepherding care of the Lord and the Lord's people. And Nancy had known some of that care too. Divine and human had known it from so many of you and knew that she had known it. And had known enough of it to help her keep getting up and going on, to help her pass some of that care to another. And scripture tells us that in that shepherding love, we will not lose heart. We will not get discouraged to the point that we cannot find our way back we can lean on a Lord that we know will welcome us back, even if we stumble a little. And since Nancy was human like the rest of us, she might have had a moment or two when she couldn't always find her better self and all that. Friends, on this good and gracious Monday afternoon, as we remember our friend, rejoice of how we've been helped in the hope of you and her, her good laughter and her good care. Let us live in love again and the shepherd and enduring light and life and love that Nancy came to know and came to trust and came to share with us on this good and gracious day. Let us live in love again in the strong and yet sweet life and love known again and again in Christ Jesus the Lord. Praise God, good news. The Lord is my shepherd. Who's Nancy shepherd? His Nancy shepherd. We do not lose heart. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You may hear a couple things more than once. 
<laughs> that would be Nancy's way. Yes. <laughs> Fran and I talked at length the day that Nancy was transitioned to comfort care. During that conversation, she asked me if I would write or help her write something about Nancy to use when the time came. I was deeply honored by her request and shared with her that after my last one-on-one -on -one visit with Nancy, that I had already begun to write down some thoughts. I met with she and Tim on Friday afternoon and we reviewed what I'd written. Please understand that these are mostly my recollections and my memories, and while they may not be 100% accurate, I hope that what I share with you today gives you some insight on our Nancy. Nancy Carol Kearney Redmond has been a fighter all her life. Born October 23, 1934, she was the oldest of eight children born to Troy and Irene Hedrick Kearney and the oldest of the 23 grandchildren of Frank and Flossie Hedrick. Nancy's mother and my mother, Mary Strong, were sisters. I don't really know her exact age, but in childhood, Nancy became gravely ill. Her daddy didn't have much faith in doctors or the wherewithal to seek medical attention for her. Our grandparents went to her home and took Nancy to a doctor, and they were told upon examination of this helpless child that had they not arrived with her when they did, she surely would have died in childhood. Nancy never returned to her parents' home and was raised by our grandparents who loved and nurtured her and made sure that she went to school. She graduated from Franklinton High School in June of 1953. My first real memories of Nancy were when she came from North Carolina to spend summers with us in Crewe. My parents lived in a two-bedroom house on Custer Street. I shared a bed between Mom and Daddy, and Nancy had a double bed in the other bedroom, and my brother Bobby had a single. I moved into bed with Nancy when Mom and Daddy kicked me out of there. <laughs> Nancy helped Mama cook, clean and do laundry, and had a few part-time jobs, summer jobs in Crewe. When she graduated from high school, she came to Crewe and lived with us permanently. Her first full-time job was behind the soda fountain at B&M Drugstore. She worked there until she went to do secretarial work at Jones & Company Insurance with a senior, Mr. James Monroe Jones, and his son, Jimmy. That career spanned more than 10 years and led to lifelong, dedicated friendships. With the office on the main street of downtown Crew, Nancy never missed a trick and knew everything about everybody. Can you imagine that? <laughs> a lot of us girls had to kiss a few frogs before finding our, prin our princess. Nancy did so as well. She went through a heartbreak but being the fighter she always had been, picked herself up by the bootstraps and continued on. She went to live in the upstairs apartment at Mrs. Shell's and was right on the corner where Citizens Bank stands today. She went to the post office every morning to get the mail for Jones and Company and then walked the two blocks to work. Her favorite breakfast has always been a Coke and a pack of nabs. <laughs> In the 60s, Nancy started to be courted by a local crew boy and believed to be confirmed bachelor, Billy Redden, who was her soulmate and the true love of her life. Before they were married, they traveled to Roanoke in April of 1964 to attend my brother's wedding. On the way, Nancy discovered that she had left home in one black shoe and one navy blue shoe. <laughs> Billy stopped in Lynchburg and bought Nancy a new pair of navy blue shoes and they continued on their way. Billy was always thoughtful like that. Their courtship continued and the chocolate pie that Nancy baked for Billy sealed the deal. 
Nancy and Billy were married here in this church on April 5th, 1965 by Reverend Manson Estes. Scott Hamlin took wedding photos for Nancy and Billy. Every time Barbara Hamlin White, Scott's daughter, was with me on a visit to Nancy, Nancy would always talk about how much it meant to her that Scott had done that for them. She never forgot anything. If ever I needed a piece of family or proof history, I called Nancy. And if the information didn't roll right off her tongue, she had it shortly thereafter. Upon returning from their honeymoon, Nancy and Bully settled into Honeymoon Cottage on Pennsylvania Avenue between Fred and Carol Knox and Ann and C.W. Spencer. During that time, they took in a foster child, James who was about six or eight months old and kept him for about a year. We all loved on James. I remember babysitting James for them in Honeymoon Cottage so they could go out dancing, which they both loved to do. And they did so every chance they got. When they got home that evening, Nancy scrambled a pan full of eggs and cheese, adding just a bit of onion. And to this day, I think they're the best eggs I've ever eaten. They went on to take ballroom dance lessons and loved all the big band sounds. Nancy in particular loved Perry Como and Andy Williams. Nancy K. Hill and I went to the Coliseum way back when to see, Nan to see Andy Williams in concert. Nancy was close to heaven. <laughs> they were forced to give up sweet foster child James when Nancy was pregnant with Tim as she had previously suffered a miscarriage. I can remember when she came to the house to tell mom and daddy that she was pregnant. And my daddy said to her, I told you that if you keep putting dough in the oven, it would eventually rise. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, I had no clue what that meant, but they all seemed to think it was pretty funny. My parents loved Nancy as they did their own children, and Nancy to us, has always been more like a sister than a cousin. Tim was born March 7, 1967. They moved to 615 East Carolina Avenue next door to Doris and W.T. Craig and Cutie and Newton Eubank and across the street from Margaret and Franklin Cassida. They had many good times and lasting friendships with all of their Carolina Avenue neighbors. Fran came along on May 8th. Tim and Fran were always fashion statements. Tim in either suede bucks or saddle shoes and knee socks. And Fran in those adorable Polly Flinder smock dresses that Nancy loved. They enjoyed being a family and had many happy years weekending and vacationing at Lake Gaston, Lake Gaston and Disney World, among other places and were often accompanied by Fran and Tim's godparents, Shorty and Gladys Thompson. In later years, they enjoyed traveling and spending time with Billy's twin, Bobby, and his very significant other, Edith Ragnar. Nancy kept the ties with Billy's sister, Ann, and her husband, Norm, very close. Nancy was a rather strict disciplinarian with her own children, and when she observed other children, who weren't quite as well behaved as her two, she would often comment that all these children needed was for their parents to leave them with her for about a week, and she would straighten them out. I believe my nephew Brendan was her biggest challenge. But to this day, Brendan loves his name to Carol. Just a couple of years ago, when Nancy's health began to decline, Brendan commented to me that it was the first year he could remember not getting a birthday card from Nancy Carroll. Most of us know that Nancy single-handedly kept the card companies and the post office in business, and we all benefited from her never-ending thought. Nancy and Billy followed Tim and Fran's journeys through life in all stages with a boundless zeal. Then when those grandchildren came along, 
Morgan being the first. Their focus shifted to the next generation with Lou following Morgan, David following Lou, and then Evan. For all of them, there was no one like Manny, quick to praise and share their accomplishments, and not the least bit hesitant to call them out when their behavior warranted it. <laughs> Nancy was a tireless caregiver to Billy after his heart attack and through his battle with cancer. She was dedicated to both my parents when their health declined, and any time we called on Nancy, she was always there. Many times we didn't even have to ask. Nancy had many enduring, genuine friendships, and among those are Cahill Flowers, Linda Johnson, Ann Warren, Liz Robertson, and Marianne O'Neill, just to name a few. She had many friends because she was a friend in every sense. Nancy rebuilt a relationship with her mother in later years, and they enjoyed happy years together. Of the seven brothers and sisters Nancy had, David, the middle boy, was killed in an automobile accident at an early age. She lost sisters Shirley, Betty, and Bobby Jean, and brother Tommy to cancer. Nancy was a constant presence for all of them throughout their illnesses. The oldest of the boys, Howard, is here today, but the youngest of her sisters, Sarah, could not be here. We all love Nancy, and we will miss her can-do attitude towards life, her wit, and her most outstanding characteristic, the gift of gab. <laughs> None of us ever tired of hearing her enthusiastic proclamation every Christmas with the opening of almost every gift. I just love that. <laughs> every Christmas when my family celebrates on Christmas Eve and we open presents, someone always says, I just love that. And we all think of Nancy. We will surely continue to do that. <coughs> I could go on and on, as I'm sure many of you could, but today I think we are all grateful for and blessed by the part that Nancy played in our lives. We are joyful that she is now at rest in peace and in God's hands. The last time that my friends Donna Matice and Barbara Hammer White and I visited with Nancy at the Moore Center, actually the day she was admitted to Johnson Willis, Barbara commented about the picture Nancy had in her room of she and Billy on their wedding day, and Nancy again told Barbara how much it meant to she and Billy that Scott Hammer had taken those wedding pictures. Nancy got real quiet and said to me, I just wish Billy was here to help me and to give me a hug. I feel secure in knowing that she is now at Billy's side and she got her wish. Friends, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, God of all grace and joy, we rejoice in the thought that you have given us new and living hope in this day and every day, new and living hope in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that by dying, Christ destroyed the power of death, and by rising from the grave, opened the way to joyous and eternal life. O God, before whom all generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants, who having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially now, we thank you for your servant Nancy, whose baptism is now complete. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace you grace gave her, that kindled in her the love of your dear name name and enable her to serve you faithfully. Gracious God, now give us faith to see beyond touch and sight some sure sign of your kingdom, and where vision fails, approach your love, which never fails. Lift heavy sorrow again today, and give us good hope in Jesus, so we may bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to glad reunion in the life to come. 
In Jesus Christ, our Lord, we thank you and pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, the concluding hymn this day is an insert of the bulletin there in the garden. <clears throat>